coming up in this read. Life changing connection. Uh, permanent change. So you've certainly left an impression on your counterpart, definitely. A lifelong impression. Hi Twin Flames, we're doing an energy check on your connection for the month of July 2023. As always, all the information that you need is in my description box and in my pinned comment below. And of course, please do keep in mind it's not going to resonate for absolutely everybody, okay? Don't take offence if it's not your read. Just come back again next time and see if we've picked up on your energy then instead, okay? Um, also as well, these reads, they can resonate for twin flame counterparts, but they can also resonate for those people that you feel an incredibly strong connection to as well. Okay, right. So just keep an open mind is basically my message. Okay, right. So what is going on? Right. Seek hidden treasure and trust the divine plan. Right. So we'll cover your first one. You seek hidden treasure. Now, that is all about the skills that, that you have, the skills that are not fully actualized. OK, so some of you are uh, incredibly talented. Um, th this could be incredibly spiritually talented or otherwise. Uh, like you, you have talents and abilities of some kind that some of you are not fully utilizing. All right. So your main message from spirit here is to tap in to your hidden treasures, your hidden skills, your hidden abilities and bring them to the forefront. Now, for some of you where you're like, well, I'm not talented at anything. Um, number one, that's bullshit. Everyone, everyone has their thing. OK, everyone has their thing that they are insanely good at um, just naturally. Like that's your thing. And if you don't know if you have your thing, um, the best way to find it from personal experience is to try lots of different hobbies, believe it or not. So anything that you've ever really wanted to do, but maybe never had the confidence or perhaps the time to do, now is the time for you to do it and see if it clicks for you. And if that doesn't click, pick up another hobby and, and see if that one clicks. Rinse and repeat until you find your quote unquote thing. OK, uh, seek your hidden treasure and bring it to the forefront. And then you've got trust in the divine. Oh, I added a word there. I do apologize. Trust the divine plan. Yeah. Um, so oftentimes we find that in uh, connections as intense as this, we try to control the narrative. We try to control the outcome. And the spirit's reminding you here, look, that's not going to work. OK, because you, you're human trying to control a spiritual connection. And we all know how that one goes. So trust the divine plan. Trust that even if you cannot see on the surface things happening, trust that underneath the surface there is quite a lot of movement. OK, that there is a lot of things that's going on that, that you don't know about. All right. So trust in the divine plan. Surrender that um, urge to control something to do with this particular connection that you're dealing with. OK, uh, really straightforward messages there for you guys. So we're going to look at your tarot that's going on. Just need to find a space to put the cards. OK, right. So we're going to look at the energy of this particular connection and we're going to do it stage by stage right so if anyone is here for any kind of instant gratification i'm telling you now you're not going to get it because i like to go really in depth with these messages okay so if you're looking for a 60 second reading you're on the wrong channel right we, we like to take a really deep dive into everything here right so first of all I'm going to pull your energy. So this is the person or the peoples who are watching this reading right now. 
they're going to look at your energy first okay i'm doing this so that i can see what exactly it is that we're dealing with first and then we can get the deeper the the deeper dive and the deeper details okay right so what is your connection what is your perspective on this particular connection right now okay so what is the oh what is the collective's perspective on the twin flame connection right now okay right so you've got the hermit and karma it's two major arcanas and a ten of swords okay so for those who are attracted to watching this read it's telling me and again you're you being open-minded is everything because it is a general read okay it's not a personal read so only some of this might resonate for you here goes your perspective on this twin flame connection it has caused you to really take a deep dive into yourself with this hermit being your first card out and the fact that that one when it came out it refused to flip and reveal itself so that in of itself is a message right so a lot of you haven't revealed yourself to your counterpart not all of you just a lot of you okay you're still in that deep deep introspection stage of figuring out everything that you've been through with this particular connection doing a lot of research for example with the hermit energy keeping a lot of things to yourself and really just sort of focused on gathering the, the, the knowledge okay that the hermit is a very knowledgeable individual but it also indicates to me that the knowledge that you have acquired about this particular connection you haven't vocalized yet okay your card right next to that one is karma in traditional tarot that would be the card of judgment so i do actually in in spite of the fact you've got the ten of swords there we'll come to that in a minute this energy here <clears throat> i absolutely love that energy because it tells me that you have surrendered to this connection you have released expectations of you being able to micromanage or control this particular connection all right um because you're karma that's all about change is coming and you should embrace it and you have embraced it you embraced the change that came with this situation that really intense change that came with this connection um that the sort of change where you regress within yourself temporarily and, and really look at everything from a much deeper perspective a much deeper level okay and then the ten of swords which is some kind of ending some kind of betrayal so you've accepted certain things that happened within this connection and they were out of your control there's in, in in spite of that energy there i do feel this sense of peace that is washing over you so you're not fighting against it and th there is also a message here as well about how you're a lot and I, I don't want to sound patronizing okay it's just a message that's coming through i'll show you where it's coming in from the owl in the tree you're a lot wiser because of this experience it, it, it's not been easy it, it's been quite frankly fucking awful for some of you you're a lot wiser for it now you're a lot more spiritually knowledgeable through this experience and you're still trying to make sense of it as well you're still trying to make sense of the whole process right so it's at the bottom of that deck the queen of wands queen of wands energy yeah feeling a lot more confident now um again don't focus on gender 
okay? The gender, all it indicates is the feminine or the masculine polarization of the principles, okay? Um, so, with that being the Queen of Wands, and I know you can't see it properly because of the glare off of the lights. I need to put a filter on the top of them at some point. Um, that's very magnetic energy, okay? Um, it's, it, it's you, I feel, it's a strange message that's coming through here. I feel what this is telling me is that you're focused on your root chakra at this point in time. You're focused on making sure that your needs are being met. You're finding your courage again, your passion and your joy for life <clears throat> after you've gone through all of that. Okay. Um, I want to say vibrant as well, feeling a lot more vibrant than you have done for a while. And to be honest with you, Twin Flames, you're looking really, really attractive at this point in time as well, with that being Queen of Wands energy. All right. Um, now, this could also tell me, for some of you, that in your perspective, that your counterpart betrayed you over here in favour of a third party okay because sometimes the queen of wands it can signify the other man or the other woman you, you, you know the the femme fatale type person okay so for, for some of you that is going to be what's going on here okay you, you feel or you know for a fact that your counterpart stabbed you in the back betrayed you deceived you also for some of you in favor of another person okay who quite very possibly is actually a karmic person okay a karmic situation and thus by default then put you in a karmic situation okay so that's your perspective now we're going to take a look at your uh, twin flame counterparts perspective Can you help out our collective, please? What is their counterpart's perspective on this connection, please? For our Twin Flame Collective. What is the other side of the coin's perspective? Thank you. Okay. Death and the Three of Swords. A very painful, painful ending. Um, and I do feel that regardless of how long ago this happened, it's still, it's still having a negative effect on your counterpart. You got more major arcanas that are coming out. So you've got the Fool that's just come out now as well. Um, okay, so Zodiac information. I, I know not everybody is interested, but for those who are, you have Virgo energy. You've got Heavy Scorpio, Gemini. You have Aries, Aquarius, and Libra so far. Okay. I feel... Because it, it, it's coming through on their perspective of the situation. I, I, the first message that comes through here for you guys is your counterpart. At first they tried to ignore it. And then they tried to make light of it. You know, they tried to make light of the situation. And now we see them going through that grieving process still. I'm going to need to clarify this. If you just give me a second. Can you clarify that death energy, please? In their perspective, Twin Flames, you changed this person's entire life. Okay. With that, with that death energy being their first card out, it was like life-changing connection. Uh, permanent change 
So you've certainly left an impression on your counterpart, definitely. A lifelong impression. And clarify that death energy, please. For our twin flame counterpart's perspective. Thank you, the star. Aquarius energy. Healing, nurturing, rebuilding. I'm getting hope. Your counterpart's holding, holding on to hope. Uh, they're saying that's the only thing that they have left is to hold on to hope. And it's interesting as well because the, the fool in this particular deck, you'll notice, is actually looking. And, and in fact, not just looking, but pointing. The fool is pointing towards this three of swords, which is that grief, anxiety, heartbreak. Um, pain that that is quite intense, quite long-lasting pain, and he's he's pointing towards that. So your counterpart's saying, I "I'm still hurting. I'm still grieving. I'm still in a lot of pain here, but I'm try I'm trying to get by." I feel with this one that they, they're trying to get by and they're definitely holding on to hope. Hope that at some point this can be um, ooh, rectified. That's strange. I don't usually get that word with the star energy. I don't normally get the word rectified. So your counterpart is wanting to rectify something here. And clarify the three of swords, please. Thank you. Oh, okay. This is in reverse. The chariot in reverse. Cancerian energy. Yeah. Um, your counterpart feels that at the moment, at the moment, this situation's going nowhere fast with the chariot in reverse to clarify your three of swords. And that's why they're holding on to hope. So they feel helpless. Okay. In their perspective, they're telling me that they're, they're saying I made a mistake also with that energy. So in their perspective, that they know they made a mistake. Okay. What are the counterparts' intentions here, please, with our Twin Flame Collective? What are the counterparts' intentions? Thank you. The Seven of Swords. Interesting. As an intention. They're going to sneak back in. That's probably not the best way to do it. The Knight of Swords and the Eight of Cups. Mm. Um, okay, so your counterpart is fully intended on either number one, as I've already mentioned, sneak back in, which tells me that they're still embroiled in a karmic situation for those of you where that was the case. So they're sneaking away from that karmic situation. Hence why you've got the Seven of Swords here as their intentions. Um, it's less than honest. Do you know what I mean? It is very deceitful energy, very sort of cloak and dagger. Um, so that's the first thing. Or oh, they're trying to sneak back to you. They're trying to sneak a message to you. Because you've got the Knight of Swords there as well, which is communication. Um, it is something that they have put a lot of thought into. So perhaps you didn't leave things on the best of terms. For them, for them to feel like they, they have to be uh, sleek it in this manner. That there's something else that's going on here that I'm not seeing in your cards that gives them the impression that they have to be sleek it in order to come back in. Because for whatever reason, there isn't an open door policy that's going on here. Okay, 
which would lead me to that assumption that whatever they did to you was pretty fucking bad. Like, it was bad enough for them to actually have to sit there and think, how am I going to get back to my counterpart? How am I going to do this in a really clever way? And they are trying to be clever. Because right next to it is the Eight of Cups. But if you look at the, at the bottom half of this masculine, it's an octopus. Now, what is it that they say about octopuses? Or octopi? What is the plural for octopus? <laughs> if you know, let me know in the comments below. Is it octopuses or octopi? Um, yeah, these most intelligent creatures on Earth, aren't they? So that is in combination with these two swords energies here, which is already about intellect, reasoning, communication, either the written word or the spoken word. It's thought and imagination. Your counterpart is actually really, really intelligent. Uh, strategic. That's the word I'm looking for. They're very strategic. So they're trying to strategize on a clever way of, of how to sneak back in. That heavily hints to me that this is going to come through a either a fake profile or it's going to come through on an unknown phone number. Okay. So definitely do keep a keep an open mind because you've got um, a really unusual way of getting back in touch with you that that's going on here. They fully intend on leaving the situation that they found themselves embroiled in. They fully intend on it. It's Pisces energy. Can you clarify that Eight of Cups, please? We're going to clarify these Seven of Swords as well in a minute. I just need to get the Eight of Cups first. Clarify that Eight of Cups. For our Twin Flame Collective's counterpart's intentions. What's going on with the Eight? Thank you. Okay, the High Priestess and Justice. Your counterpart has um, very, very likely consulted with um, a spiritual person. That could be another card reader, something like that. Okay. It could be a Libra. It could be a Pisces. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. They, they, they have consulted, for, for some of them, uh, a spiritualist. Um... And they've gotten really good advice off of them. Okay, so whoever they consulted is very spiritually gifted. And they did give your counterpart solid advice. And specifically solid advice on how to stay on the right side of karma as well. Okay, so this spiritual person that they have been seeking guidance or something from has told them straight like what you've done here is you've created this karmic situation you need to level this out and make it right okay and and that's what your counterpart fully intends on doing right uh the other thing is of course their own intuition and doing the right thing so they they do fully intend on doing right by you okay Um, let me see. What will the short-term outcome be here, please? For our Twin Flames. It's a short-term outcome. Thank you. Wow, it was a big jump. The short-term outcome, the King of Wands. Yeah. Okay. So, obviously, that's the counterpart to the Queen of Wands. And the context that the Queen of Wands came out in could mean one or two things. Number one, it could mean for the short term, your counterpart is sticking with the karmic connection, the karmic situation, for the short term only. And then for the rest of you, where you were strongly, I 
recognizing yourself within that Queen of Wands energy, um, which is someone who is just starting to get their confidence back, just starting to really, you know, uh, enjoy their life again, starting to feel genuinely happy and hopeful and re really feeling good about the direction that, that your life is going in. If that's how you were feeling, when we mentioned that and you resonate with being that queen of wands energy then for the short term it's saying that your counterpart is going to make themselves let me just switch out the camera your counterpart is going to make themselves like that they're going to pull themselves up to your level so that they can match your energy you see how that works they're going to match your energy right so what is the long-term outcome here please for our twin flames, there's a long term outcome. We have a nice big jump. We have a long term outcome. Well, okay, you've got a couple. Uh, the six of coins, a knight of coins, and a king of coins. Three coins cards. Beautiful. Okay. Obviously, that's uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, I'm feeling some of you are dealing with a very earthy Libra as well. Um, I, I, I don't know why this really overwhelmingly strong Libra energy that, that just hit me there like a ton of bricks. Now, it could be actually either you're a Libra or you're dealing with a Libra, or it could just be the... Um, that sort of seventh house energy, which is all about partnerships relationships how we relate to others you know very sort of venusian which is love beauty art attraction fertility um <clears throat> your, your ideals that sort of thing but it can also be that uh, karmic implication of someone trying to do the right thing like so again take what you feel is right for you to take from those messages that I've given you, okay? Like it's going to resonate differently for everybody. The long-term outcome, it does indicate to me with, with these that there is a strong focus on growth, which is really, really good. We're also seeing a lot of green, of course, because it's coins energy. So greenery, that could be straight up money, finances, possessions, or assets. It could also indicate like your heart chakra as well. So like a healing of the heart chakra. And I, I do feel that all three of those messages are relevant to the long term outcome, to, to be completely honest with you. So we see in the long term that that balance, fairness and equality does come back into the situation. OK, now, however, that actually manifests is going to look different for all of you. OK, that balance, harmony and equality and fairness could come in through a multitude of different ways. So, for example, for some of you, it could come in through you guys actually being in physical union with each other and sorting things out and everything working out really, really well. For the rest of you, it could look like you heading off. You're, you've already rebuilt your life and now you're focused on something that is more um, <clears throat> secure and substantial or whatever your perception of secure and substantial is specifically for you that's what your focus is going to be on okay so you see see how you need to be really really careful with general reads um, for the most part though in the long term <laughs> Use our heading towards massive success. Now, again, the word success is an umbrella term, isn't it? That could be success in relationship, like for this particular relationship, or it could be success in business. Maybe that's where your focus is. You know, a lot of you threw yourselves into your, your careers and your business because of this situation here being out of your control. Uh, that that's what you naturally gravitated towards controlling something that was within your control then instead and you're seeing massive um, rewards 
coming through because of all that focus, dedication and determination that you put in over there, right? So seeing the results of your hard work, right? Now, if this is seeing results of your hard work with your healing process that is specifically about this twin plane connection, then the same message applies. You're going to see a lot of rewards that come through that. And it's going to be long lasting as well because of that knight of coins energy being literally in the middle of these two here. Now, your king of coins, that can also indicate, again, take gender out of it. Your king of coins, that can indi indicate long-term commitment, all right? Because a king of coins is someone who absolutely dedicates their entire life to something or someone, all right? So take it as it resonates, okay? On the whole, that's a very positive long-term outcome here for this particular situation. Okay, what's at the bottom of that deck? The Nine of Swords, yeah. Uh, currently really struggling to make sense of everything that, that has happened here. Um, but again, you will struggle to make sense of it, especially if you're still trying to put human words to a spiritual connection. It also tells me that um, I, f I feel that, that you've gone through the worst of that Nine of Swords energy and your counterpart is currently working through it. Okay, but it's under their judgment. Yeah, exactly. Change is coming and you really should embrace it. Listening to your higher self, following your spiritual journey is judgment. It's that um, it, it can be a rebirth as well. So, yeah, something definitely isn't completely uh, over here. So I'm, I'm feeling like for, for some of you, you're going to be getting closure. And for others of you, it does seem to be some kind of reconciliation on the cards here. It does. Can you tell us more about this energy, please? For our twin flames. Okay, tell us more about this energy for our twin flames, please. Okay. Uh, this one's come out in reverse and it's the Ten of Spades. Okay. Um, so in cartomancy, whenever you get the cards that come out in reverse, it lets us know that the energy is very, very unsettled. It's unrested. Um, it, it's either something is being intensified or it's being depleted or delayed. Okay. So it's like the extremes. Um, this is worry, imprisonment, grief and trouble, and it's in reverse. So again, with that delayed, uh, that tells me that your counterpart has been delayed on freeing themselves from some kind of imprisonment. Of course, for some of you, that could be an actual incarceration or that's a metaphor for another relationship, not necessarily love relationship, but another relationship could be with um, overly controlling members of their family, for example. You know, that that's also classed as an imprisonment. Um, <clears throat> they, they have been delayed somehow on freeing themselves. So it's telling me that they're going to be delayed a little while longer. And then you've got the King of Diamonds that's come out in the upright position. That is someone who is very, very accomplished. OK, uh, they have a lot of influence. So a lot of people look up to them that this could be your energy. This could be your counterpart's energy. Right. Take it as it resonates. Uh, it's someone who's got a lot of influence over other people, someone who is actually very, very powerful. And they're really likable because they don't fully appreciate how much power and influence they actually have. So they're not corrupted by it. At least not yet. Okay. Um, sometimes this King of Diamonds, 
again not necessarily a man right it could be it could be a feminine who carries a lot of masculine energy to them especially at this point in time okay keep an open mind uh this king of diamonds sometimes can become quite hot tempered uh, they can become a little bit too revengeful, right? Um, but basically, it's someone that, when they've got their mind set on something, th that they cannot be persuaded to change their mind, and they cannot be negotiated with once they've got their, their mind set on something. So it's someone who's incredibly stubborn. Again, that could be you guys like that. That could be you guys being incredibly stubborn, immovable, um, feeling impassioned about something to the point of, uh, I, I don't know, um, anger. Uh, so with this one, I, I will say, Twin Flames with this one, uh, keep your anger in check listen to your anger um i don't know may maybe utilize a piece of garnet maybe that that can help temper some uh extremes of emotions but definitely listen to your anger because remember as well like your, your anger is the parts of yourself that uh tells you that you deserve to be treated better you know, it's the parts of you that know that you're being disrespected. So wh whenever you feel that someone is pushing your buttons, basically, um, number one, I'm going to tell you, don't hand over your power so easily and try not to match their energy. I know it's really, really difficult. Um, I struggle with that one myself. Like, for example, whenever someone's being incredibly disrespectful to me, my natural knee jerk reaction is to match their energy. And I know that that's toxic as fuck, right? So this is Spirit basically telling you all guys, look, if possible, learn to be a wee bit more stoic because that's going to help you out exponentially the next time someone's trying to push your buttons, okay? Maybe do some research on sto stoicism and that's going to help you to uh, protect your own energy, okay? There's nothing wrong with being stubborn within the right context. But then it's like an extreme of any any emotion. Any emotion can be positive or negative. It just depends on how you utilize it. Okay? So it, like I was saying, there's nothing wrong with being stubborn when it's within the correct context. A lot of the times we find that we have to be more adaptable. Right? And I feel for most of you that this comes through, uh, through you putting so much pressure on yourself as well. So maybe take a look at that too. Why are you putting so much pressure on yourself? Okay. Um, yeah, beautiful energies. So let's see if we can pull some additional messages. What else can you tell us please for our Twin Flame Collective? Oh, oh, uh, that's in reverse. I hide behind material things. So your counterpart used to prioritize material things. It's come out in reverse. That tells me that they don't do that anymore. They've recognized that um, material things are temporary. That's why, it's in, that's why it was in reverse. Material stuff is temporary. But love... It sounds cheesy as fuck, but love is forever. And I feel you, even though we're apart. So your person still feels your energy. Else, please, Thrower, thank you. That's reversed as well. I left you before you could leave me, so that's in reverse. They, they never actually left you. Again, it was in reverse. I do read reversals. The energy is distorted. It's important to read reversals. That also tells me, Twin Flames, that your person's trying to do a U-turn. I left you before you could leave me. So they were very prideful. Really prideful. 
and they're leaving all that behind. I feel, <laughs> I feel you're leaving me behind. <laughs> Spooky. Yeah, they can feel that you have either fill on detached or you're in the process of detaching. Okay, do you have a healing message for our twin flame counterparts, please? Okay, now this is a tarot deck. Um, I've had a play around with it because it's a, relatively a new deck for me. I absolutely love it. Um, but I, I thought, you know, using that as an oracle deck is actually really powerful. So that's what I'm doing. I'm using a tarot deck as an oracle deck. I have a healing message for our twin flames, please. Okay, right, so we're going to take that top one. And it's the Seven of Cups. Okay. Um, also, if you're interested in any of the decks that I've used for your readings, you can find all of that information in my pinned comment below. Right. Uh, okay, so your healing message, Twin Flames, it says there is a fine line between dreaming big and becoming lost in a fantasy. The Seven of Cups asks that you allow your mind room to wander among the stars without restrictions. However, you must remain aware of where your feet are planted. When we dream big, our creative mind expands, allowing for more opportunities. However, the difference between dreaming and living in a fantasy world is the action. When you take steps to bring a dream to life, it transforms into a goal, something far more powerful, and you increase your odds of making it real. The Seven of Cups may indicate a situation that may be limited due to your inability to envision something more extraordinary. You may feel as though it is not possible, and as a result, a restriction is then created. When you allow yourself to feel worthy of grand events or desires, your opportunities will become only limited by your imagination. However, the Seven of Cups may indicate that you're, uh, that you're spending too much time daydreaming about what could be instead of focused on the present moment. Without action, you're no closer to actually achieving your goal by merely envisioning it. When it comes time to increase your potential to manifest abundance, the rabbit's energy is ready to help you create. The rabbit brings fertility to your situation and the ability to produce new opportunities. In stories, it is the rabbit that often serves as a guide, leading to great adventures. Call on the rabbit when you feel lost in a field of possibilities or unsure of which path to take, as it will show you the direction that will yield the greatest results. So this is all about abundance, reproduction, open uh, creativity and good luck. Okay. So that's a message all about for either yourself or your counterpart. And of course, it could resonate for either. Um, Spirit saying, look, it, it's all fine and dandy having grand dreams, uh, good intentions. But if there is no action put behind these particular thoughts and ideas and aspirations, then it's not going to move anywhere. So this is spirit nudging the person who is daydreaming. You're being nudged into taking some kind of action. Okay. That's what your ultimate healing message is all about. It's time. It's time now. What else, please? Go to twin flames. Okay. Right. So you actually got two of these ones. 
Um, your intuition constantly senses the voice of spirit and conveys this through emotion and feeling. Spirit's great love and wisdom continuously flows through you like a stream of soft diamond light. Stop for a moment and feel this beautiful flow of energy. Allow it to permeate every part of you. You and spirit are one, entwined by invisible threads of love. It's beautiful. So again, a message about feeling your emotions. Okay. And then every challenge provides an opportunity to discover a deeper meaning to life. Each challenge can be a gateway to something greater. Use your, uh, use your intuitive and creative powers. Many solutions exist, move beyond the fear, and you'll discover that there are no limits apart from the limits that we ourselves have placed. Interesting. Someone's put limits on something. They put limits on themselves. And see them two flames as well. Symbol of the twin flames. Spirit is telling someone here in this dynamic that look, many, many solutions to your problem exist. You have to move beyond your fear and actually take the action. Okay, right, so that is what I have for you, Twin Flames. It's up to you what you do this reading. Please remember that tarot is not a scapegoat, it is not a crutch, it's a guide, and you're the one that's in charge of your destiny. If you feel that you could benefit from a personal reading that is catered more towards your own specific needs, then you can place your Viking at phoenixkiatarot.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.